Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel where we are just going to get deep into the charts, take a look at Bitcoin price action, Ethereum, some of the altcoins, traditional markets. I'm going to go across the board and see if I can get it all done here in 15 minutes. I'm going to start with the trade setup on Casper that uh, I believe is amidst a bit of a breakout. Casper is supposedly one of the ETH killers out there, one of the best performers, um, you know, has had a very strong performance this year. And just quickly looking at the measure move off this, yeah, something like that, targeting a move to the range highs. Definitely in the cards um, as we, you know, broke out of this bit of a pennant here. And you can see the last one that broke to the upside had a pretty significant move. The other thing about Casper is it tends to lie dormant and then kind of just really start to pump. So I'm actually going to take a screenshot of that, post it in our Discord group for just daily trade ideas. If you're interested, feel free to take a look at the link in the description below. Well, I actually get a snag. That good old snippet tool is one of the best things out there. Um, all right. Next up, I want to talk about uh, what's going on with Solana. Why not? As everything is amidst a bit of a breakout, I guess it's the Tesla news. The Cybertruck is out. Everybody's excited. Um, but just following up on Bitcoin, kind of breaking out, uh, doing doing what we said she was going to do. Uh, just following the little, um, I want to call it the Bart Simpson, the Lisa pattern. We're going to have a Lisa and a, and a Bart pattern. This is to the upside and to the downside would be this exact same formation, uh, but flipped to the other side. And I would not be surprised for something like this to get pushed over the weekend. Um, institutional, you know, micro strategies just bought, I think their third largest purchase of Bitcoin ever yesterday. And um, if you go back and look at the charts, every time that guy buys, you get a little dump and then the market pretty much pumps. But micro strategies now has like $5 billion uh, worth of Bitcoin on the books. And uh, thank God for the new FISB accounting rules. It allows institutional clients or institutions to hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet. The FASB accounting rules, um, definitely an improvement. Thank you, Michael Saylor, to the markets. And just want to take a look at the liquidation map here really quick, heat map, as I'm kind of just getting in the charts myself. It is bright and it is early this morning. Um, so looking at the heat map, uh, we did head up to the top side. I think that's what I was mentioning yesterday. The question is, are we going to throw it back to the downside and grab that liquidity before they uh, go for the big push to the upside? Like I, I know, like I have some kind of a secret sauce and know that... Uh, well, uh, like it's going to go to the upside. I really don't. I'm just telling you what the indicators say. Uh, so don't don't hate me for it. Liquidation levels. But we did have, you know, quite a bullish close last week. And for the month on Bitcoin and most, most of the altcoins, we're going to take a look. Look at these bubbles hanging out to the downside. I wouldn't be surprised if they go for that. Um, if it doesn't bounce really from, from where we're at right now, um, this is where we want to see the price bounce from. Otherwise they're going to drag us in the dirt a little bit more and, and then push it up for the weekend. I noticed typically this week price action tends to fly, uh, you know, around 7 PM Pacific time between five and 7 PM. If we're going to have an update usually starts around then, and it's usually after having a down day. Anyways, uh, just observing there for uh, Mr. Bitcoin and Mr. Bitcoin, like he has a real first name. Um, and just looking on the 15 minute chart to see if this is still going to be valid, like an idea that, hey, we come all the way up to uh, 39.9. I don't, I don't know if those, those uh, you know, these are going to be the, the exact targets, um, but... If we wanted to use a FIB tool here, we could say, yes, this, this would be the first target for a retest 
and then that would be the second target that uh, 41 splitting the road right between 40 uh, you know uh, uh, 40 40 and 42,000 and the parabolic blow off target would get you all the way up to 43. So you'd want volatility to be extremely low on the 15 minute time frame and on the four hour time frame and on all the kind of higher term time frames to get another how much is that? Is it 20%? 20%. It's only 15%. So a daily volatility expansion could definitely do it for me. And you'd want to see daily volatility expansion come from a low level and get above 25%. So we don't have that signature in the works right now. Do we have it for the 12 hour? Yes, uh, coming from a low level, which I think that's low enough for me. And getting a bit of an expansion in volatility means, you know, price tends to go in the direction of the trend. And yes, you can see here a little more clearly, I'm gonna pull up a different chart, on the 12 hour that we have taken out the wicks, right? We have closed with a full candle body closure above the wicks. And I'd be interesting to see where the good old Bollinger Bands are right now. And this is a great tool if you want to track price action um, on a higher term time frame trend. And here's what I'm talking about. As uh, as the as price action closed above the top side trailer band, which we're not quite there yet, uh, slightly below it, but could could say, hey, trend is beginning to happen. As you can see, this first closure above took us, you know, pretty darn high. And I would consider this a closure above by taking out the wicks with a candle body. The only thing is the volume just hasn't really increased. So we'd want to see the volume increase pretty much in the next couple of closures here and momentum and Bitcoin to really stay above 38,472. That's a very uh, important number for the 12 hour time frame. If we're going to remain bullish over the weekend, really, um, if you start to see that 12 hours start to buckle, that'll be your first warning sign that uh, potential correction down to the green box um, is going to be in the cards. You can see on the hourly, we started to close above, got a closure below, and potentially rolling over here right now for Bitcoin in the short term down down maybe to the middle side of the range. I want to look back at that liquidity chart. And this really does help. I don't know. I, I It has helped me. So that would push us down to that uh, 37.9 level. Is that 37.9 is where that liquidity is. So all the way down here. Interesting. And that would just be retesting these highs right here once again. I could see that happening. Definitely momentum has crossed down from the critical zone and we're ab not above 90. So just a fresh cross down exiting the bullish control zone. That does look good for some downside. What does the RSI say on the hourly time frame? You're going to have, is that all that, uh, couple drives I've hidden bearish divergence, which is just on the hourly. And I believe there's some on the four hours. So I'm just going to keep an eye on that. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of these EMAs. I'm going to get rid of some of these indicators for you guys. This looks too, too darn sloppy on the chart. But uh, so forgive me there. But again, what is hidden bearish divergence? Price is making higher highs alongside the RSI making lower highs. So you have one, two, three drives there, and that should give you a shot to the green 55, which where is that coming in right here at 37,987. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see a short term push to the downside uh, for 
The U.S. market open today. Otherwise, it's just going to bounce off this nine and keep going. I mean, it's right at the right at the make or break spot on the shorter term time frames. I still think the higher term time frames are geared to the upside. I mean, you can see we're just absolutely running to the upside there. And I'm going to get rid of this. So Bitcoin trade sideways and up gives some of these altcoins some room to breathe. Let's take a look at Ethereum and just. Real quick, reminding myself the invalidation point for me is below this green box. Uh, more specifically, I mean, I, I guess I, I'm going to use the green box. The purple 200 on the four hour. If we can smash through that, get a lower high, then I am ready to call. Look for some of the downside targets. Other than that, um, the monthly time frame did just close bullish. I want to also kind of... Uh, bring back some of those memories some of those memories of talking about the higher term time frames on mr blx we did call this out uh, way back here way back here if you've been following the channel for some time we said look monthly stoke cross to the upside i remember making a video putting it all over the place uh to and we're targeting the not uh, 0.5 and the 618, which is going to be this green box. And uh, every single monthly stochastic cross to the upside from the critical zone has resulted in no less. I have it on a chalkboard than I want to say a thousand X, a 10 X. Um, it's it is literally been a key pillar in um calling the macro shifts in direction. And this is the momentum indicator. And by the way, these are the halving cycles. If you're new to the channel, we have them marked off. Uh, this is 12 months prior to the year, uh, to the halving cycle. And that's typically when the bull market starts. You get a rally into the halving cycle and a bit of a correction, miners taking profits. And then we pick it up for the rest of the bull market, which we suspect ends here, um, you know, somewhere around I want to say November of 2025, uh, somewhere around, well, the parabolic blow off top target would put us at about uh, 240,000. Well, let's be conservative and say 180. That's my, that's my uh, crystal ball rubbing for you. Not financial advice, not a financial advisor. And obviously we can, uh, you know, take profits along the way and judge it from different reaction airy zones uh, on the Fibonacci tool. The emotion uh, gatherer, apparently that's what it does. It is uh, judging your emotions. Are we in the trap zone or <laughs> the fear zone? Anyways, back on to Ethereum. Following up on this one, had a bullish monthly close and took out the wicks. And this is pretty much a continuation of the upside. So anytime you close the candle body above the previous wick high, that is a bullish continuation sign. Now, not to say we can't get a back test all the way down to $1,900. Um, definitely can happen. But for the shorter term uh, and the higher term time frames right now, remaining bullish. And, uh, you know, just watching some of these other altcoins, the top performers, they all have the same signature. It's so... Well, it's, it's very, very similar. Uh, chain link, injective. So I guess I'll throw those up here. But it's this same, I don't even know what kind of pattern you would call this, but you potentially call it a W. Um, looking at it, something like this. But I'm going to pull up even Solana, right? Same, same little shape here. You know, the volume signature doesn't look too great, but Solana looks like it's going to continue. I'm kind of changing my bias there on Solana. Um, but not too much to say, except for momentum is crossing up. Uh, you will have divergence from, uh, this pivot right here and pretty much Solana back above 6243. And I'm looking for a run back at the highs. So 6243 with a chance to get back into the bullish control zone and expanding volatility from a low level. Uh, Solana does look pretty, pretty strong here. Um, and wouldn't be just surprised to see this one, you know, get a little pump over the weekend. 
as a lot of the altcoins have been managing to pump Saturday and Sunday. You could have literally just worked Saturday and Sunday and made a ton of money scalping the altcoins. Um, look at this one, Tau back up at uh, 293. And we did say our ultimate uh, parabolic blow off top target for Mr. Tau is going to be right here on the 4236 Fib. As this one is in a blue sky breakout, there's no telling where the party is going to end. But uh, this would be your parabolic blow off top target. And since we've been along from way, way down in doggy town, down at about 50, um, yeah, started at 50 bucks, got an 80, 100. I think, uh, to be fair, I think my larger, you know, snag was at about 100 bucks. But I think this one, I mean, is getting a one more buy signal, one more buy signal. The thing is we've had three, three volatility expansions on the daily. Are we going to get a fourth one on a brand new altcoin? Hey, it could happen. Anything can happen. Uh, injective also, um, we've been talking about this one for some time and pretty much the perfect, uh, the perfect breakdown retest. Um, and, and a breakup. I, I, I wanted to say, I know I pointed this out yesterday to a few people, but uh, that is this one. And the question is, is it going to continue on? And uh, trend would be your friend on this one, guys. Trend would be your friend. But as you can see, this is the same shape that chain link is in right now, right? Link is at the same pivot just, just hasn't made a run at the highs yet. That's why I do like Chainlink. I'm going to check out Uni. The Unibot Sniper is looking a bit weak. And looks like it does want to play out a move down to the 21 over some time. Uh, you could get, you know, one more pop to the upside. And ultimately, we are looking for this one to uh, bust through this level and head it up on to about 10 bucks. Uh, what's another one I wanted to look at? Solana dot dot got a nasty, uh, a massive candle yesterday, not getting any follow through. Um, I did say this. Yeah. I was looking at a potential backfill down to this level, even a little bit further is okay. Completely okay. Which I do have a nice little TP in that area. Um, but overall, ex expecting some expansion on this one as uh, volatility is now expanding and you're getting all the buy signals. We just need to get back in the bullish control zone and not in the bearish control zone on the daily time frame. Momentum flips around below 517. So that means, you know, probably not going to see that upside target play out for a few uh, days or maybe even weeks. Uh, but the daily momentum indicator is a very strong indicator and is looking pretty erect right now. To the upside, Ethereum, AKT, let's throw it up there for some fun. I know there's a lot of AKTers out there. And Tico Tawari, I heard the sell signal is out, at least for another portion of their um, positions. Was that the pullback? The Tika dump? The the Tika dump. So again, looking at it from a parabolic blow off top standpoint, uh, 548. If that is the ultimate low, in fact, and um, actually, we should probably go back to this level right here. Oldest chart history on KuCoin, I don't know, but yeah, I would shorten that up to about 351 and back below this pivot at 143, uh, probably, you know, going to play out a little bit more on the downside and just curious where the bottom side pivots are going to come in. So, you know, if I had to guess, you know, if I had to guess, uh, probably something like this, right, where... Maybe one more push up and then and then we play out a correction at some point. That's where I'd be, you know, interested in this one. Again, uh, things can get moving fast to the upside or fast to the downside. So 
watching out for that trend. Um, all right. So I think we did everything. I, I'll follow up on AXL, which kind of going on our thesis on this one. If this does perform anything like Tau, because it's a narrative driven, smaller term time frame altcoin. I'm glad I'm doing this all with you because uh, it just reminds me what I want to do with my own positions. As um, I was looking at this setup on the hourly time frame. Um, I guess I shouldn't have moved that line. Really hard to judge something like this. I, I do think it looks more like a bounce uh, from here than not. Um, let's see, coming back from here. You're gonna have that three drives of hidden bullish divergence on the hourly. Looks like it does wanna take a shot back at the top side of the range. Uh, just looking for the four hour uh, momentum to flip back to the upside. We've got low volatility and yeah, that's why I was targeting this buy area off the green 55. Um, simply put, you know, volatility expansion and you know, a flip back to the upside is gonna look good for a bit of a bounce here on this, this token this wonderful, highly esteemed piece of internet technologies. Um, but that's it for that one. CRV following up on a trade setup idea that, um, that I think it's taken too long to work out. I think it's taken too long to work out. And that's why, well, they say patience is a virtue. And what were we looking at? Just a potential run at that green 55, like the rest of the altcoins have done in this W formation to get completed. Where does this idea start to fail? Well, unfortunately, it's uh, below this wick. So, um, <laughs> On a, on a weekly time frame, on the daily, I would say any kind of a closure back below here at 546, that would do it for me. Uh, but otherwise, looking for this one to take another bounce over time, over the weekend, maybe, potentially, uh, next week. But volatility is low. We want to see expansion, bullish divergence, which we have don't have, we do have coming back from this pivot right here. So if we can confirm this as a higher low, closing the daily back above 557.41, I'd be looking for a run right at the top side of the range at uh, 59 cents. And then of course the, sorry about all the squiggly lines here, but of course, ultimately we're getting the, you know, touches along the green 55, a little bit of hidden bullish divergence. Two drives could get you a shot to the top side of the range, which is uh, right here. Three drives, three drives and yeah, uh, two drives of the 21 or mid range, I would say. Three drives of the top side of the range or the green 55 and four drives gets a breakout. So do we have the four drives? No, we do not. So it's still fairly weak, not the strongest coin, but all, you know, long-term breakout and target is established. And that is again, the green 55 at 78 cents. Uh, do I want to cover anything else? Am I going too long? I think that's it for today, guys. Um, Tesla cars, let's, let's just check out Tesla really quick. Traditional markets and Bitcoin and gold. And we did say time to short gold, time to short gold. Um, that's the analysis on gold. Dollar getting a bounce means potential pressure on um, traditional markets going into next week. TLT did get a nice bounce. Gap fill has the potential for one more leg lower. That could hurt us. We got Jerome Powell speech today. Bitcoin dominance, beefing it up, looking strong. Tether dominance. Pressure's on the downside. That's what we want to see. And a further push down would look nice for uh, for the rest of the altcoin market. And the ETH Bitcoin long-term downtrend. We've been talking about this one for some time. 
And just saying, hey, look, wanted to see a higher low on the four hour time frame. And we would give the benefit to the bulls, to the bulls, to the Ethereum bulls. So if ETH Bitcoin can bounce from here, Ethereum will start to outperform Bitcoin. Altcoins will start to uh, very much so rally. And alongside Ethereum, if Ethereum starts to break out here in this inverted head and shoulders breaks out by closing above the neckline here, which is going to be... Um, Inverted head and shoulders. So you got left shoulder, head, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to give you the measure move. I'm also going to post this one in the Discord. Again, just posting some trade ideas in there. Feel free to drop in, give your comments, ask a question. 2353. Let's see if that lines up with the liquidity zone on the heat map for Ethereum. And we we're saying there was a dark yellow on to the upside and that's why we were kind of bullishly biased right so we took out the first dark yellow we're making a higher low momentum is flipping back to the upside oh back hurts leg day yesterday and the four hour it looks like there is kind of that short-term pullback idea that uh we had spoken about unless we just grind up higher here and Stay above 2,055 bucks. Um, traditional markets coming down, coming down. At least on the four hour, breaking the green 55, I guess your target would be down a little bit more. A retest of this trend line, perhaps going into next week. Uh, S&P 500. Also grinding it up slowly and surely to the upside. You know, due for a correction. Where does the correction come in? Probably the not 0.5 and the 618. <coughs> But this thing has been generally bullish and upside, bullish and upside. Bullish and to the upside. So supporting Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin narrative. I wanted to bring up the Bitcoin treasuries chart. Where is it? Not that. All right. Let's check out the alts, altcoin season index. Um, also, checking out the fear and greed index. We haven't checked in on that in a minute. Um, when's altcoin season? When this gets above 75? Check out blockchaincenter.net. Put this one in your calendar. Anyways, this is the altcoin's best performers over the last 90 days. You can see Rune and Casper, Solana, Injective, Render, Link, IMX, AVAX, CRO, Aave, and Elgarand all in the top, pretty much 10 right there. Um, there's Bitcoin coming in 47% over the last 90 days, not too bad. And what are the ones to keep an eye on? Well, the, I think the ones that have, um, you know, the good ones that need to play catch up. What are the good ones though? Those are the questions. And uh, there's a great old saying, you wanna feed your winners, feed your winners. Get rid of your losers. Um, just some food for thought there. And Crypto Fear and Greed Index coming in at a 71. If we look at the all-time for the Fear and Greed Index, remember, you want to be fearful when other people are greedy. Greedy when other people are fear fearful. <laughs> and here uh, you can see we're kind of just chopping around here around the 70 zone and the extreme fear, sorry, the extremely greedy zone above 80 or above 90. Take your pick. Probably a decent time to sell or look at uh, sell signals in that zone. And then another friend of mine was just asking me this, look, how, how are you going to call the top on the next, you know, run? I guess we'll do another video on that. Make sure you like and subscribe so I can show you this cookie cutter way to call the macro top. Um, you know, got to be thinking about exit plans at some point, planning ahead. So we'll be taking a look at that over the next week or so. I think this is a long enough video for today. Uh, this one, Radiant, we did bring up. Slow performer, slow performer, hit the W, came back and not doing anything near. I guess that trade setup's uh, still in play there. Wow. 
I didn't take it, uh, but trade set was there. We mix, we mix. So that's just interesting to to note, actually. Um, you know, what do you do? Let's say you were long from here. Are you bringing your stop losses up on the four-hour time frame? I would suspect yes. Um, I would suspect yes. And uh, let's see, optimism. Falling channel, high or low, this is actually good to look at as well. If we can put in a higher low here on the four hour and then break out of this thing, that's how these things break. Three, yeah, four, four touch, looks like a break, bounce off the purple 200. I do like this one for a bit of a, a bounce after a check back, right? Off the green 55, I think it does have the makings. Um, if you start to lose this area, well then, yeah, then you know what's the story. Back to the bottom side of the falling channel. And I think another one to keep an eye on, guys, is this Neutron. Neutron. Uh, just heard about some good... Just heard about some good technology. Uh, apparently, a lot of the Cosmos network and a lot of the DeFi protocols are going to be moving to this network over time. Uh, given that it has been around for some time, this project, um, again, I, I think it's good to keep on the watch list. It's not looking like anything fantastic right now. In fact, I want to look at the all-time uh, coin market cap. I want to look at the all-time history for this coin. Neutron. We'll even take a look and see what it does. Neutron. N-E-U. Tron. There it is. Mr. Neutron, all-time performance. So made a new all-time high this year back on November 2023, last month. And that's why I did like this one for a breakout. And I'm looking for continuation, actually. That's why uh, I do like this one. When you're making new all-time highs, new funny pieces of internet technologies, $100 million market cap, $13 million low volume right now, max supply, 1 billion neutron. You've got circulating supply, 22%. So might want to look out for the unlock schedule on that one. Speaking of unlock schedules, uh, I, I heard about the Solana unlock schedule. Uh, running a little uh, chain link long here, thinking about taking some profits on this one. Um, but it has just broken out of this falling channel and I should be suspecting a move back to the top side of the range. So do I raise the stop loss up is the big question. And, um, anyways, I'm going to make that decision later. Um, I want to check out on this one also glimmer cup and handle, uh, just perfect, perfect prime opportunity for breakout on this one. I do want to pick this one up, but it's hard to get. So um, I'm going to check out uh, Mexi and BitGet. Link is in the description below. And this one's really going to benefit if I believe, is it Adam? Yeah. If the Cosmos ecosystem takes off again, this one should pump. Um, all right. That's it for today, guys. Hope you had a blessed and highly favored week. If you liked the video, enjoyed some of the content, have a comment or a question, please leave it below. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care.